Raindrops, Trip. drop top, drop top. Smoking on cooking the hot box. Cooking, fucking on your bitch, yeah, that, that, that. Cooking up dope in the crock pot. pot. We came from nothing. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Romano Show. We'd like to welcome you all for our very first episode. Let's get right into it. Last night, the Philadelphia Eagles draft defeated the New York Giants 24 to 19. The Giants were one game away from making the playoffs and couldn't manage to deal it up. The Giants also strongly needed this game to show that they were a legit Super Bowl contender with their powerful defense and an Eli Manning-led offense. The loss finally helped the Cowboys, who officially clinched the division. The Giants head coach Ben McAdoo spoke to the media after the game and said that they were simply scored touchdowns and we kicked field goals. Now the question is, did the, this loss change your perspective on the New York Giants? Brian Thomas. Well, yeah, I think it absolutely did. You know, the Giants, yeah, they've had a great run, but this is a game that, like you said, they simply needed to win. And I felt like they just, you know, just didn't, weren't ready to play. And if you come into the playoffs against a team like the Falcons, you know, the Seahawks, the Cowboys, and you come out like that, you have no chance. So I feel like, you know, this is it for the Giants. You know, there was a game that they needed to show, and they just didn't come out ready to play. Johnny is I disagree 100%. I believe the Giants are one of the better teams in the NFC. Tonight, just last night, they had a crushing defeat, which could ultimately blow their chances in the playoffs. But during that game, there were many aspects of it that I did not like. The fight. Giants defense could not put points on the board. Giants offense could not put points on the board. Giants defense could not stop the run game and could not get to Carson Wentz. Even when they were hitting Carson Wentz, they were getting called penalties on every single play. I'm not going to go into all of that, but I believe the Giants are one of the better teams, seeing as how they're the only team that defeated the Dallas Cowboys twice this year, but another team was able to do that once. Now, you're saying the Giants are not Super Bowl contenders? No. Show me another team this year that can beat the Dallas Cowboys, because many teams have come close, but they've actually followed through and done the job twice, or the New York Giants. Now, obviously, tonight they were not up to, last night they were not up to par, but they're still one of the better teams. They just had a letdown last night. Every team's going to have that game, but I believe they're still one of the better teams. Oh, yeah. I would agree, though. They are, they're certainly one of the best teams, just, um, definitely by their record, but, you know, like I said, you know, if you go into the playoffs and you play like that, you stand no chance. So, can Eli Manning, you know, play a high every game? I know their defense is going to, you know, they're going to do what they do. You know, you hold the team to, what, 24? You know, you're most likely going to win, but... Just Eli Manning looked terrible, and you know you place the Seahawks. You know, it's like a defense like that. You know, I mean, I just don't see them winning. So, that but, is true. but in terms of the question, has my thoughts changed about the Giants? You know, I would say it. I mean, yeah, it has a little bit, but I still feel like they can go to the Super Bowl. It's just they, their offense needs to do stuff. You know, so I think, so I think both. we can, both can agree that you know, yeah, they're still a contender, but you know, I don't know. I just can't say they're the best team in the NFC right now. I don't think really anybody can. So. No, they're not the best team. Yeah, that terrible performance last night all around. Yeah. Question number two. Has your MVP perspective changed in the last week? Brian. Um, you know, it definitely has changed. It's still Tom Brady. I don't see how you could go against him. But in terms of, you know, the guys that follow him, you know, you look back a couple weeks ago, it was definitely Matthew Stafford. But now he's falling off. Uh, Derek Carr, he's falling off, you know, with that thumb injury of his, or finger injury, middle finger, actually, my bad. So, um, I don't know, Aaron Rodgers honestly could end up in that MVP discussion. His team's won four in a row, you know, they're about to win the division, you know, they have a, a game against the Vikings that they have no reason to lose, and then you have the Lions uh, week uh, 16, so, yeah, that's my thoughts, you know, it hasn't changed, but, you know, it has in the same way, so that's what I have to say. Can I ask a good question? Yeah. If you had to pick someone right now, who would it be? Tom, oh, it's Tom Brady. Tom know. Brady still? No, he, everyone doubts him, and he just plays at his best. So I don't think you could go against that. But as much as I don't want him to win, but I don't think you could go against him. You know. John, do you have anything to say in response to this? I would definitely say Tom Brady is in contention. He, If I had to pick right now, I think, believe it should be Tom Brady. There are no other quarterbacks who are playing at his level right now. Some quarterbacks who are doing good this year. Aaron Rodgers, I do not think I can put him in contention right now. As of late, he's been better. Just last week with that win against the Bears. Yeah. In the last minute, two minutes of the game, that clutch win. Yeah. However, 
with how he did earlier in the year, I don't think I can put him in contention for MVP. Yeah. While Tom Brady has been better the entire year, ne normally it's uh, more people you can talk about in contention for MVP this year, but there really have not been that many elite players this year. Been good teams, elite teams, but I do not think you can put anyone above Tom Brady this year as quarterback. So what are your thoughts on Ezekiel Elliott? Do you think he deserves any votes? Do you think he'll get any votes? Anymore? I do not think so. Um, I think he's going to get some, but, you know, just, you know, he's going to be a great player, but he's just not over Tom Brady. I think that's a little ridiculous. He'll play a rookie over Tom Brady this season. I don't know. I, was, I believe Ezekiel Elliott may get some votes, but all in all, he's having an extremely good season, but you also have to remember the insanely good offensive line, the best offensive line in football, yeah. leading the charge for him. I'm not taking away any of his skill, but it's not all him, as we all know. True. You need an offensive line to block to have a good run game. Yeah. The Pro Bowl offensive line for the NFC, I believe, is all Cowboys, if not, you know, maybe all but one. So, wow. yeah. They've yeah. definitely proven themselves. That's it. I mean, yeah, that's fine. All right, we're back from break. Two days ago, DeMarcus Cousins was ejected against the Blazers after reportedly spitting his mouthpiece out at their bench. The official would later reinstate the technical, and Cousins would go on to finish the game with a season high of 55 points. Sean, do you agree with Cousins? I do understand him, but I do not agree with him. I understand the point of view where he's coming from, where he's heated in the moment of after scoring that and one point, and to the, hear the emotions and why he would do that. But what he did, I don't agree with. I believe he needs to rein it in and cool his head and think of what's going on, the situation he's in, and how spitting his mouthpiece out and saying these types of things could hurt his team further down in the run. And while he did come back in the game after being reinstated and scores a season high, and they won the game, Still, there could have been far greater consequences. Brian? Yeah. <clears throat> Pardon me? Uh, I agree. Yeah, the NBA, you know, at the end of the day, is a professional organization. And DeMarcus Cousins throughout the last couple of years has really, you know, made a bad look on the, the, the league, you know, with all of his technical. You know, you got to think, how many did he have last year? Like 16, 17 technicals. So, but I mean, yeah, but other than that, you know, he's honestly, a, he's a top five player in the league, you know, looking at his stats right now, he's averaging 29, 10.7, and 3.3 assists. Those are all-star numbers. Those are superstar numbers. So I feel like, you know, he needs to get on a better team, you know, look at the Celtics, you know, a team like that. And I feel like he could really do more work. But, you know, in terms of, you know, do I agree with him? I, I really, you know, I, I, like Sean said, I, I understand where he's coming from. You know, he's mad. You know, he just wants to do what he does. But, you know, you just, you're sending a bad tone in the league, and he deserves, you know, the technicals that he's getting. So, uh, yeah, I guess I agree. Yeah. yeah, but his team is, you know, not that far from the playoffs. They're, what, uh, two games out. So I don't know what the Kings are going to do. But. Next question. Odell Beckham was fined 18000 for his Craig Sager cleats last Sunday against the Lions. Odell's response to the situation was this. Quote, 18K without a single warning, but the world would never know. They act like it's no big deal. No respect for the message, IMO. Brian, what is your opinion on this situation? Well, you know, it's, it's kind of hard because, you, you know, like I, you know, people are obviously wearing, you know, bright colors on the field. But, you know, they're, you know, Odell signed a contract. He has to be wearing what Nike is telling him to wear. So I really can't side with him, although I would, you know, would like to because I feel like everybody should be wearing colorful stuff in the field for the next you know month or so because Craig Seager was that great of a guy but you know it's just you, you can't do that and you're not going to get away with it and it's nothing personal it's just he broke his contract and he got fined for it simple as that honestly nothing else to add you know really Sean yes if he's going to sign a contract with Nike he can't go around and be wearing other gear I mean would it be nice to be wearing what he wants to but yeah but he's in a contract he can't violate that and um if he's going to Show up, you should shut up and just pay the consequences. Nah, it actually depends. What does it depend on? What his contract says. Yeah. Well, for his contract, he should be wearing Nike for the no, next year. Wait, does, was, the was it, does the contract include him not being able to wear other people? Ne next question. <laughs> Troy Aikman says Dak Prescott is the most impressive young QB he has ever been around on Sirius <laughs> XM NFL radio. He is. 
Sean, this one goes to you first. Do you agree with Aikman in his regard to Prescott being the best young QB? Another to topic falls onto Carmelo Anthony. With a quote from the former Nuggets coach, George Carl, saying that um, Carmelo was a very offensive player, but refusing to share the spotlight with others and unhappy when he did have to share it. And um, coaching, coaching him meant working around his defense and compensating for his attitude. Brian, what is your opinion? On this quote of Carmelo. I mean, it's true, you know, but, you know, I don't see how you can talk bad about the, you're the best player in your organization history. George Carl was a, you know, sort of addicted to the spotlight himself. You know, he was always, you know, around the media, he always was the topic of what was happening. And Carmelo, you know, he led the Nuggets to the playoffs every year. You know, the first, I believe, nine seasons or eight seasons with the Nuggets, he led them to the playoffs with virtually no one around him. Yes, he had Iverson, uh, Kenyon Martin, uh, Billups one year, but, like, I just, it's just not right towards Carmelo. I feel like Carmelo, you know, never really had a guy around him that was as, as good as him or if not better. So I, I don't agree with George Carl. You know, I feel like Carmelo deserves more respect than that. But I will agree that he is offensive minded. He didn't do enough on all around sides of the court to really lead a team like LeBron, like Durant, you know, guys like that. So uh, that's, that's really it. You know, I feel like it's not fair. Do you have anything in response to what Brian just said? I do believe Kendall, um, excuse me. <laughs> I do believe that Carmelo Anthony is addicted to the spotlight. Um, in Denver, he was obviously an extremely elite player and still is an elite player in New York. Where in New York, obviously, any team in New York, the star player will have the spotlight, which Carmelo does have. In Denver, with his elite caliber of a player with nobody else who was in the same talent league as him in Denver, he was obviously the spotlight player there and was leading his team there. Where he's obviously been a great player and still is a great player with his skill. I do believe he is, if with another player on his team, I believe there would be some jealousy there and him not wanting to share the spotlight. What about right now, though? Do you think he's sharing the spotlight with Brazilians, you know, Derrick Rose, guys like that? I do believe he's adjusting to it, but I believe he's on a winning team now, which I believe he's accepting instead of just holding the spotlight entirely. But I believe he does enjoy that. Right. Now our guest speaker, Ken Dell. Yeah. Yeah. What was the question? Well, Anthony, what do you what do you think of his the former Nuggets coach uh, quote on him? Oh, uh, I believe he is addicted to the spotlight. Um, like a couple of years back, I think 2013. Uh, he was a, he was a good player. He was a great player, but I think he just didn't share the ball enough and. I mean, yeah, I mean, he held the team, gave them some wins. Uh, he's all right. Uh, yes. Yeah, I actually want to bring up a, a fact, though. Like, I remember, like, a couple of years ago, Carmelo, you know, was really criticized for ball hogging, and, you know, it doesn't really mean that much, but, you know, he actually does, in terms of touches and passes per game, he ranks third in the NBA. I think behind Curry and, I want to say, Russell Westbrook, or not LeBron. So, you know, he does pass the ball. It's just, you know, when he's passing it, you know, guys really haven't been hitting shots. So that's part of the reason why, you know, but he could, George Carl did say um, beyond that quote that Carmelo could have averaged 10 assists per game if he really wanted to because he's that gifted, but he just chose not to. And Carmelo always wanted to score. So I don't know, I, I honestly could say that he was addicted, but you know, he really had nothing else to do. I mean, he was brought to that team to carry it and he did exactly that. So I can't really, you can't criticize him, I mean, you know? Like, actually, no, I disagree with that because he was brought to the team to carry it. And he was the number one on the team, but he didn't carry the team. They sucked. He did, though. He brought them in the playoffs every season. He brought them to the conference finals one year in 2009 or something like that. All right, yeah. next question. All right, that's actually it. That's it. Is that like end for show? No. Yeah, that's the end for show. And that's a wrap on the road. And that's all we have for today. <laughs> Get! Yeah! That makes me fucking with my fucking set. <laughs> <laughs> I got two.